know, you know, we had to, we could, we had no answer in the first half for their jet read. They did such a great job perimeter blocking on the edge, and uh, you know that's it's hard to simulate in practice, and it's hard to see, you watch film and you know how they're going to block it, but getting off is one thing or another. So Coach Check and the staff just made a great adjustments with our overhang players, and that was kind of the answer where those big 13-yard gains were turning into maybe three and two-yard gains. So just hats off to both uh, both uh, offensive and defensive staff for their adjustments. You know, we had 14. Uh, only had 14 points in the first half. Their defense was really uh, stifling, and, and we had a hard time getting moving their big guys. I do think, uh, you know, they go fast tempo too, and I think that kind of wore them down as well, and uh, we go fast tempo as well, so I don't know if they're not used to playing a team up-tempo. But anyways, it was two up-tempo teams, and I'm sure it was exhausting for the players, but the adjustments on both sides of the ball were incredible by our, our staff. Just so proud, and our kids execute. What does it say about their toughness and their grit to, as you said, take that spark and turn it into a flame? Yeah, you know, that's just their M.O., man. I, I tell them it's in their DNA. They just don't quit. They refuse. They know the game's four quarters. Uh, things didn't look great in the first half, but they don't end the game at halftime. You know, there's four quarters, and they realize that. And sometimes it takes coming into halftime, readjusting, um, trying something different, and uh, they go out and execute. And they're just unbelievable. You know, I, I don't know how... Because things don't look good a lot. You know, uh, all of a sudden it's 24 14, we're going in half, and like, holy cow, we're punching the mouth. But they answer. And the spark was, I think, that pick by Brady uh, down the sideline to, to kind of change momentum because we were kind of like trading punts back and forth. And luckily we had pinned them deep. And so Brady's pick was, I, I don't know how long it was, 17, 18 yards, but it was huge. And I think that's where the kind of momentum where kids started to believe and started to roll. And I think that was the spark that, that created it. Bring you back memories of the Sugars offenses in the days. You know, to see those guys across there um, was incredible. To see Coach Jack Sugars, and I know there, I know uh, Eric uh, Sugars and Tim Odette very well. You know, Tim Odette, they're all Muskegon guys yeah. uh, um, that that lived here at one point. Odette was a head coach at Reese, or uh, Reese Puffer, and then a little while at Oak Ridge, and so those are all great guys and great coaches. And you saw how hard those kids play. Um, because, they, you know, they want to play for each other and they do the program the right way. So it was great to see that. Um, you know, you hate you hate beating them, but you also don't want to lose. But that was uh, two great football teams battling at each other. And, um, you know, it's unfortunate that one has to lose, but I I'm glad we're moving on. How nice was it for you to line up in the victory formation at the end of the game for once after the last three, you know, uh, hectic endings? Yeah, yeah, it, it was great, you know. Um, <laughs> the last, you know, Forest Hill Central, Caledonia, East Lansing has, we, we had, you know, we had to either make a stop or make a play on offense or special teams. Uh, so to get in the victory formation, that's the greatest play in football. So to be able to do that was, uh, you know, that's a, a big exhale. Um, for all of us, as well as the kids, I'm sure. Did it kind of shock you when uh, Carson Bordeaux picked off uh, Radio's first play of the game? I did. That was, you know, he had he had some great range. You know, he had another pick down here where they call, I think they called pass interference on the corner, but he came from midfield to that kid is a player. And what really scary is about them, the majority of them are juniors. You look on their defense, I think they had three senior starters, so they're going to be a team to, to to reckon with next year. They were this year, so I can imagine. So. Long story short, uh, he's a tremendous player. Yeah. Uh, we thought we had a good play. They were in man, and uh, 11 was guarding another dude. He came off and just made an incredible catch over the shoulder. And I thought that would have been a, a spark right there to kind of, you know, we stop them, we get a touchdown there, but, you know, they got great players, and you made a great play. Uh, you were talking to the guys there at the end of the game. This is your guys' fourth uh, state finals appearance. Both of your guys' losses, though, are both the uh, De La Salle. Uh, what does it mean to be able to play them again and maybe try to get some, uh, like, come back against sure, them? Sure, you know? sure. It, it's, it's, you know, it's different coaching, coaches staff. I think the first time we played them, there was a different coach. Second time we played them, a different coach, and now a third coach. But it is, it is the same school, so um, it's kind of neat to see that again, you know, 14 and 18. Uh, 2000, we, we saw them, and so uh, another Muskegon head coach, you know, Dan Roan, who obviously uh, uh, is an OV grad, coached at Fremont for a while, won some state champions at West Catholic, so you obviously know they're going to be prepared, and um, you know, it's kind of like our arch rival at Ford Field. This is three times um, out of four that we're, that we're playing them. Thanks, Thank you, Coach.